Hi there. Welcome back. I'm Gail Jones and I'm taking you on a journey, Paper Mosaics. This is session four and I want to tell you a little bit, catch you up on what we have already accomplished in our workshop. Session one, we created personalized paper. We use watercolor, copy paper, tissue paper, heavy duty tissue paper, rice paper, and we, with the watercolor paper, we did a mock marbling. And with the copy paper slash rice paper, tissue paper, we did a tie dye technique. Using our own colored personalized papers really enhances our projects because it has our essence and our energy, and it really gives our expression just a little boost of life. Using other papers are fine as well, but when we make our own paper, it really does make the project sweeter. Session two, we talked about motifs, and we talked about if you feel very confident in your drawing and sketching abilities to play around with some of what's in your imagination. And we took the summer, summertime theme into consideration to sort of spark our, our thought processes, our imaginations in that direction. And those who weren't as confident in their drawing ability, I suggested that maybe we might do some geometrics, some geometric mandalas and go in that direction. Session three, we worked on our geometric mandala and we just started, I demonstrated and we went in that direction and filled up our time working on that project. And now at session four, we're going to be working on our motif project, the motif that you have come up with. I came up with dragonflies. I love the dragonfly motif. I use it all throughout all the various mediums that I work in, whether it's fiber, whether it's ceramic arts, glass, it doesn't matter. I just enjoy it. And for me, the dragonfly represents freedom flight to freedom. So I use three dragonflies here, place them. I drew a nice little center line um, so that I can figure out the placement without them looking like they were soldiers marching. And, and I glued them down. And we also went through that in session three, how to glue down your focal points. And I do enjoy having in my mosaic work um, projects, I like to have my focal point to be whole, not in pieces, but whole. And that represents for me, my journey in trying to be a, a positive human being, trying to be a human being that continually wants to work on my stuff, right? And the brokenness represents the world in which we live and how through the interesting brokenness, the interesting challenges we encounter in our world, how me trying to be that better person all the time really is a benefit and a help to our world, even in a very small locale. You can see I drew a circle around my center one, and then I added another line around that circle. And that I started filling in because this is a tedious process, filling in your mosaics, whether it's paper or whether it's hard stuff tile, filling in with the small, with the tessera, which is equal to small bits is, is, is tedious and it's, but it's very meditative and it's very quieting. And, um, it, the process of what happens, the, the result I think is very rewarding. So I'm going to put a little dollop of glue, 
close that lid back up. Get my glasses on. And I'm going to fill in Tuck that piece close to that corner. You do want to leave space. How much space, that's up to you, but I do suggest that you be consistent in your spacing. And inside this circle, I chose to use pretty small pieces of the ripped tessera. And for the paper mosaic, for the tessera, I do enjoy ripping my pieces. I love the raw edge effect. It's very organic. And it truly lends to the overall effect that I want to achieve. So I have that about half, a little less than halfway done. So I'm going to remove that and I'm going to focus in as I demo the outer circle. And you can see I made the pieces about two thirds larger. I just want to show you that effect. And unlike my focal piece, it's okay if some of the edges rise up. In fact, I like that texture that that brings. It brings like a different dimension. that gives you an idea you can see where now that line is becoming visible <clears throat> and I'm going to have this line equally as visible I'm going to switch out and I deepen the color so it'll be a really nice contrast. Look at those spaces there. I think that's a little too wide for me. So, where are you? Straighten you out. I'm going to add see how I'm using this voila there
to close that in a bit. <clears throat> And then the rest of the fill-in and on this paper the raw edges has a bit of white which I really really enjoy. See how things are starting to take shape. See how I got that close up into there. Add that because I don't want it to fight with the wing. And you can notice that I'm allowing the tessera, the paper bits, to come over the edge of the substrate, my form. But in session five, we'll deal with that. So I'm not going to even go into that at this moment, but I'm allowing that to take place. Finish this up with a couple here so you can experience that. See, so just with my finger pressing it down. So, as you can see, <clears throat> how nicely, and you notice the lines. The lines of the circle there. I think that's enough fill in to give you an idea of how to fill in your pieces, how different sizing can enhance your mosaic, how different shades of paper can also enhance, how even staying away from the line, say if you were doing a landscape, each hill and valley just leave a little bit of space between your two pieces of paper so that you can see that line that horizontal that horizon line or if you have a uh, sunburst so that there is the eye can fill in the blanks and the eye can imagine that there is this wonderful line going through that this teaches the eye to go around the subject better. One of the things I want you to think about, um, since this is not a live workshop, but a video workshop, your papers. I want you to be able to rip your papers, rip enough of your papers so that when you get started filling in you have a nice supply available to you so you can get a rhythm going you want to have some tri uh, triangles you want to have some squares some rectangles so that you can easily as the need pops up fill them in and you don't have to keep going back and ripping and ripping and tearing and tearing. I do use my 
toothpick to both apply the glue and also to in those tight spaces I use the other end to hold it down and, and let my finger press it into place and if it's not in the place that I would like it to be while the glue is still not set yet I can use this clean end of the toothpick to push it into the area which I want it to be in. Again you want to leave space in between each piece of tessera that you lay down so that your substrate shows through. We're not going to be applying grout like you normally do in the hard stuff mosaics. So we're using that space. That's why I really enjoy the colored mat board because that color pops through and it enhances our composition. 